Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. In this one, we're going to prove not something about numbers, but something about an algorithm. But we're still going to use induction for that. So let's take a look at how that works. Consider the following very simple algorithm. It's a simple while loop, and all it does is it computes a times m. If you want, pause the video for a second and convince yourself that indeed this algorithm computes a times m. All right, now that you're convinced, let's also try to convince me. So let's try to create a proof that this algorithm indeed computes a times m. Now when proving correctness of these algorithms, we need to consider four steps in our proof. Step number one is what we would call the basis property. It's comparable to the base case of an induction proof. Step number two is the inductive property. Well, that's similar to the inductive case in an induction proof. Then we need to prove the eventual fal falsity of God. Basically, this means that we need to prove that the algorithm stops at some point. It doesn't loop forever. And finally, we need to prove its correctness. So after we're done, we have the answer we expect. So how does that work? Well, let's take a look. As I mentioned earlier, we claim that this code computes m times a. And what we have is we have what we call a loop invariant. There is a statement that is true before the loop, after every iteration of the loop, and after the code is done. Or at least this is what I claim. And these invariants are very important when proving properties of algorithms. In this case, I say that the loop invariant is the following. The variable r is equal to i times a, before the loop, after every iteration of the loop, and after the code is done. And this is what we're now going to prove. Before the loop, i is 0, and as we know, 0 times a is 0. And, well, would you look at that? r is also equal to 0. So our basis property holds. The invariant is true before the loop starts. Now let's take a look at step number two, the inductive property. The inductive property states that after a loop, or after one iteration of the loop, the invariant is still true. And similar to induction, we assume that the invariant is true right now, and now we're going to execute the loop. So let's take a look at what happens. The new value of r is the old value of r plus a. But the old value of r was the old value of i times a, right? This is what our invariant claims. So that means that the new value is i old plus 1 times a. Ah, would you look at that? That's exactly i new plus a, because in line 4 we increase i by 1. So the inductive case also holds. Then on to step three. We need to prove that at some point our algorithm terminates. It stops. It does not loop forever. Well, since i grows every iteration, at some point it will have to equal m. i never decreases, m never increases, so at some point i will equal m and the loop will terminate. Finally, step number four. After the loop is done, i will equal m. Right? This was the eventual falsity of the guard. And since after every iteration of the loop, the invariant is true, we know that in the end, the invariant must be true, but with i equal to m. Therefore, the final result is indeed m times a. And with all four of these steps done, we can now conclude that this code computes r equals m times a. QED. Now the main thing in a proof like this is to carefully choose your loop invariant. And this isn't always easy. But you need to pick one for which you can show that it holds before and after every iteration of the loop. You then need to show that the loop actually terminates and also that usually the invariant produces the end result that you want after the loop is done. And that's it. That's how you prove the correctness of an algorithm. 
In a future course called Algorithms and Data Structures, you'll learn how you can also say something about the runtime of an algorithm. But we'll save that for another time and another course. See you around.